What is up, YouTube? So today's video, I'm going to be answering some of your questions. A week or two ago, I put a story up on Instagram. I said, ask me some questions and I'll respond to them the best I can. Some are serious, some are fun. Um, so yeah, we're just going to have fun with this. I'm going to pull out my phone. I didn't script or plan anything. I'm just going to go and answer your questions. But first, let me try and get up on this wall because I think it looks fucking cool. Oh shit, that's really fucking high. <laughs> well, that's really high, dude. I don't want to die. 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 How does it look? Good. Look good. So let's get into your questions. Question number one is, what do you think about Christian men using testosterone for mental health and better feeling? <laughs> it's an interesting one. Um, I don't think... Christian men have anything to do with using testosterone. I don't think what you believe in, what your religion is, um, whether you're a Christian or not, has anything to do with it, with whether it's right or wrong. I'll focus more on the mental health side of it. Is testosterone the solution to mental health issues? Maybe to a very certain small percentage of people, but I would recommend you go see a doctor to find out whether your testosterone levels are actually too low because if it is and he prescribes testosterone, then that's awesome, right? But I think for a lot of people, that is not the issue. The issue is something deeper than that, causing you mental health issues. But a lot of people just use testosterone for muscle gaining benefits and all of these different things when that's not really the problem. So I'd start off by going to a doctor. If he prescribes you testosterone, awesome. But that's really the case. And so I would really take time to think about what is causing the mental health issue in the first place and then trying to solve that problem rather than diverting to something like testosterone. Okay. Question number two. What you did first to be able to leave your job? Hmm. Two things. The first thing is, if you want to leave your job, if you're un unhappy, that's awesome. I'm all for it. But you need to have two things. Number one, you need to have money saved up so you don't have too much pressure on you when you quit your job, right? I think I had something like four to six months saved up when I quit my job, which relieves some pressure, but also isn't so comfortable that I can just chill. So I need to, I have to work hard, but I can still sustain my lifestyle in the meantime while I'm building whatever it is I'm building. And the second thing is before you quit your job, you need to have a plan. You can't just quit your job and then start thinking, okay, I'm going to start doing this or maybe I should do this or that. Now, you need to plan out everything before you quit. So the day you quit, you know exactly what actions you're going to take over the next four to six months in able, that's going to enable you to create the life that you want. How did you not get an ego being such a successful man? How do you stay humble? This is a deep one, dude. How do you stay humble? I guess I'll say this. I don't measure a person's value based on how much money they make or how much fame they have or what their physique looks like or who they know or who they live. And so therefore, I can't see myself being better than anyone based on these silly merits in life. I think life is way more than that. You know, so it could be silly of me to think I'm better than anyone and treat people differently because of what they do for a living or what they look like. And so or because I view the world that way, it's very easy for me to stay humble. I have way more respect for someone who's a waiter, but has a kind heart and treats people with respect than a millionaire who's a drug dealer or does some shady shit to make them money. Because if you value success based on monetary value, which is money, you are saying you respect someone who makes money regardless of what they do for a living. And I know a lot of people who do some shady shit, but they have a lot of money. But I have zero respect for that. Because let's be honest, being successful in terms of monetary value, it's easy. Go rob a car if you want to. Go break into a store somewhere. But it's not right, is it? But you could do it if you had to. And so I just think there's more to life than measuring people's value based on money and, and fame and all of these silly things. The way I always look at it is, if they had to start a zombie apocalypse tomorrow, I think about it this way. So there's no jobs, there's no money, there's no social media, none of that matters. Would there be people that want to spend time with me as a person? Would people want to end up with me in a room? Because now fame doesn't matter, money doesn't matter, none of these things matter. So people base that decision of what kind of person you are. Are you kind? What kind of heart do you have? How do you treat other people? Do you treat people with love and respect? And that's my ultimate goal. 
I want people to choose me because of me. And so therefore I treat people based on how they are, not what they have. So that's my answer. What is your height and weight? Ooh, easy one. So my height is 1.8 meters. I think you measure based on some in some other metric. And my weight is 89 kilograms. So you'd have to convert to pounds as well. How your earlier career choices led you to where you are now? Um, I took a lot of action as a youngster. I don't think anyone grows up knowing that they are going to do this by the age of this. We have perceptions and ideas of what where we want to go and what we want to do, but it just doesn't always add up that way. And that's why people always ask, what did you want to do when you were in school? Like, what was your dream job growing up? Because very seldom that ends up being the thing you actually do in life. When I was in school, I wanted to be a fucking policeman or some shit like that. Obviously, that didn't work out that way. So what I did was I just took action from a very young age. And every time I just took the option that seemed like the best feasible fit for that point in time. So I started working corporate job, hated it, quit my job, started my first coaching business, loved it, fell more in love with the business side of it, started business coaching fell in love with the social media side of business coaching and went into social media coaching. From social media coaching went into influencer. And so the one thing just leads to the next and to the next thing. So again, if you ask any super successful guy, Elon Musk, if you ask him now what led to his career choices, I don't think he can tell you, yeah, when I was eight years old, I thought I wanted to build a fucking rocket. Like nobody thinks like that, right? You take decisions based on what the best feasible option is for you right now. And then that thing will just lead to the next. You just got to do your best, man, and have faith that everything's going to work out in the future the way that you need it to. Okay, next one. There's actually some cool questions. What is your workout split? And how many sets or sets till failure do you do? So my workout split is... So I have a push day, which is chest and shoulders. Then I have a pull day, which is back and traps. Then I have arms day, which is biceps and triceps. And then I have leg day, which is calves, quads, and hamstrings. And then I take one day off. So I have a four day split, one day off, and then I repeat again. Four days, one day off, repeat again. And so that's generally my split. Um, so sets with every time I exercise a muscle group, I try and do at least eight to 10 sets per muscle group. So if I jump chest and shoulders, I need to do at least eight to 10 sets for shoulders, eight to 10 sets for chest. Because if you want to maximize muscle growth, you need to be doing between 10 and 20 sets per week per muscle group. So if you gym every muscle group twice a week and you're an advanced lifter, you should do about 20 sets per week for that muscle group. So you would split it into two sessions. 10 sets maybe Monday chest, 10 sets maybe Thursday chest, right? But if you train chest once a week, you would do 20 sets on that one day for chest. And because I do it well in eight days, it's almost a week, I split it 10-10. So that's my split and that's how many sets I do. Okay. Oh, what are the odds, dude? What was your dream career growing up? I think it was a policeman. I won't, in, in, in like primary school, it was a policeman. But then in, in high school, it changed completely. Then I wanted to be work in the corporate sector in finance. I don't know exactly what I wanted to do. I just know I wanted a suit and tie. I wanted, wanted an, a, a nice aircon office space with a nice city skyline. Kind of like the vibes where I'm filming this video right now. I wanted to work corporate, yeah. And you know why? Because I watched a series called Suits. And Suits is basically the series of these high-end lawyers who make a lot of money. They get all the attention. They get all the girls. They have all the cool cars. Growing up as a kid, it's like, what the fuck is not to like, right? So I chased that. And that's why I went to study BCom Finance, did my honors in finance, got my corporate job in my aircon office. And in week three, I was like, this fucking sucks. I hate my life. And that's when I quit my job and I started this whole journey. So yeah, I guess that's what I wanted to do. And I think that a lot of people relate to that because a lot of people fall in love with the idea of something, but once they start doing it and they start realizing what necessary steps you need to take to do it, it's like, this sucks. Like a lot of people want to be influencers too. That's a cool. Do you like filming yourself? Are you comfortable in front of a camera? Do you like editing videos? Are you good with creative skills? Because if you're not, you can't be an influencer because those are all parts of becoming an influencer. And so a lot of people think this way with all aspects. A lot of people want to be an entrepreneur too because it's a cool thing. But you know what? It's fucking hard too. Next question. How much sushi can you eat at one sushi buffet on one sheet meal? I can eat a lot of sushi. So on average, I eat like 
20 to 30 plates. Every plate has two to four pieces. So like... 60 to 120 pieces of sushi <laughs> per time probably which is a lot <laughs> this is a good question dude would you date emma watson if it meant you could never bench again <laughs> 110% yes 100% yes without a doubt i would date emma watson if i'm if it meant i could never bench again you know emma watson is dude oh she's gorgeous what is what is your home language if English is not your first? Afrikaans. Afrikaans is the way we would say it. You would say it Afrikaans. But Afrikaans is what we speak in South Africa. In South Africa, we actually have a shit ton of languages. A lot of languages. Especially in the black community. They have so many languages. And that's why, like in the past, I've wanted to learn one of these black languages. I think it, it, it creates a lot of respect. People respect you when you can speak their languages and stuff. But there's so many of them, yeah, like we have Zulu, Kosa, Sutu, so many of them. Um, but yeah, more common amongst white people, is that fine to say? More common so uh, among white people, we say Afrikaans in South Africa, most of us. Are you dating someone currently and what you're actually looking for in a partner? That is interesting. Okay, first of all, I used to be very open about who I'm in a relationship with, whether I'm seeing someone or not. But since my social media has really grown a lot, this is like one of the one of the spaces or industries that I've that I've decided not to sh really share anymore. Um, there are just some things that I've decided to keep private. I used to post my family and stuff, my stories all the time too. Then weird people would message my sister, and my brother, and I just don't want that whole situation happening anymore, especially on the relationship side. So it's just not something I would I'm willing to share with the world anymore so i'm possibly in a relationship maybe i'm single maybe i'm a father <laughs> i guess we'll never know and yeah i mean i heard like iman gatsi say this back in the day andrew tate said this they all said that they want someone and they will not show this person on social media they want to keep their private life private i always thought it was weird but when my social media started growing i started getting some hate in some places i saw you know what goes on through some people's minds i mean i received death threats at some time would i really want to put that person in in harm's way whether it's family or relationship never so yeah I, I won't say whether i'm in a relationship now or not but i will tell you that what i do want in a partner well, there's a lot of things, but I'll just call one main trait, which is a God-fearing woman. Because if I can date a God-fearing woman, that puts a lot of the other stuff in line automatically if you're a God-fearing woman. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Oh, that was the last one. Okay, guys, that was the last question. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There were actually more than like 200 questions. I just screenshotted a couple quickly before this video. If there are more questions, DM me on Instagram and maybe in the next video we can make part two, part three, part four. And then every week we can maybe answer some of your questions that you guys are interested to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. God bless. I'm out.